This video is going to focus on the area of a segment and before we get started let's just first kind of go through all the different vocabulary attached to circles and segments. First of all that's a circle with a radius r. A sector is a region that's bounded by an arc and two radii going to the center. So kind of like a slice of pizza. The central angle is going to be pertinent and a lot of times that angle is written out here by the arc. It just simply means that if it's written out here for the arc we attach the same meaning to the angle in the middle. So a segment is going to be the region that's bounded by a line segment and the arc itself. Now you'll notice that it is trapped within this sector and that's going to be pertinent for this. The area essentially is a Frankenstein. It is two other formulas combined together. And that is simply this. You take the area of the entire sector, that's this whole thing right here, and you minus off the, re the triangle right here. And that would give you the entire area. Typically, segments are written as approximations. So what happens is for pi, people will often substitute in 3.14. So if you take your sector, you minus your triangle, you get the segment. Okay, here is a first example. Determine the area of the blue region to the nearest hundredth. Now you will note that it doesn't say determine the area of the segment, so it is up to you to recognize that it is a segment and also to recognize what the formula should be. Let's first write the formula, that would be our first step. So here we are. Let's first focus on the sector. For the sector, the central angle right here is 90 degrees. So we're going to plug in 90 degrees right there for theta. The radius of the circle is 8, so we'll plug in 8 right here. As for the triangle, you might note that since the radius is 8 going here, right here is also 8. Now since for a triangle the base and the height are marked by the right angle, that is the two sides that meet to form the right angle are your base and height, that means for both B and H, we'll plug in 8. And now we're ready to calculate. Let's calculate the area of the sector first. We're going to need to plug in right here 3.14, so we'll do that and then when we do the calculation, we'll multiply all these values on top. So there's the 3.14. This gives us 18,086.4. And if you're wondering what happened to the degree symbols here, they simply reduced out. Could we have reduced this fraction first ahead of time before multiplying? We definitely could have, uh, just that in this case we didn't. Divide by 360 and we would have the solution to this. Uh, as for this here, 64 is a result of 8 times 8. So that gives us 50.24 after dividing through. This is just simply 32. And when you do your calculation, we get 18.24. Here is another one. Determine the area of the red region. Again, write your formula first. And then let's go ahead and plug in our values. For the sector, you should recognize that the central angle is 75 degrees, so that's going to go right here. The radius is 10, so we'll plug that in for R. And doing so will give us 75 degrees over 360 degrees times pi R squared, only R is 10. And what about the triangle? Recall that for this triangle, the radius is the same length no matter which way you draw it. So therefore the base of the triangle is going to be 10. Therefore that's the base and that's the height. And what we'll do is we'll write 10 here for B and 8 here for H. Okay now let's go and finish this up. Because we're rounding to the nearest hundredth we're going to replace pi with 3.14. That's what we're looking at there. We'll simply multiply across the top. That's 23,550. And again, the degree symbols reduce out. 
80 over 2 is the result of this part here. Take 10 times 8, essentially, and you get 80. So when you divide that, you're going to get 40. So that's 65.42 minus 40. And subtract those to get your answer. Okay, let's do one last one here. Let's say you were to determine the area of the orange region, or rather, you're given the area of the orange region. It's 177.82. Determine theta to the nearest angle, given this information. Just as before, we want to start off with our formula. And just make sure that you recognize that you're looking at a segment here. This is a segment because it's bounded by a curve and by a line segment. Just as before, we want to focus on um, just one part first, the sector. Hopefully you recognize the angle is unknown. This is going to remain so. R is the radius, and the radius should be pretty apparent. It's 20, so we know 20 is going to go there. Also, you're all, you, you do know the value of A. A is 177.82. You're given this at the outset. So let's write those in. So what about that triangle? The formula for the triangle is the base times the height over 2. And recall that the right angle tips off where the base and the height are. So we know this length, or rather we don't know this length, but we do know this height here being 12. That's all we've got so far. What we have really is this blank space for the base. So we're going to have to work to get that. Let's first focus on just this portion here, and that's what you're seeing. Let's get this length right here. Now you'll note that we have a right triangle. And for a right triangle, if you only have two side lengths, you can always get the third using the Pythagorean theorem. So that's x squared plus 12 squared is equal to 20 squared. Please note that the right angle is pointing at the hypotenuse. The largest side goes there. And if you solve for x, you should get 16. Therefore, since we know that's 16, that means that the entire length here is going to be 32. So that's what we write in right here. So now let's clean this up a bit. Let's rewrite this. Remember, we're multiplying here. 3.14 times 20 squared. And we get 1256 theta. And that's over 360 degrees. 384 is what you get when you multiply 32 times 12, which in turn gives you 192. All right, now that we've done all the simplifying we can, let's go ahead and solve this equation. In trying to isolate theta, what we want to do is first get rid of this 192. So what we'll do is we'll add it to both sides. So doing that arithmetic leaves us with 369.82. Okay, let's multiply out this denominator. Doing that allows us to reduce this out. And multiplying these, we get this ginormous number. Since we're solving for theta, all there's left to do now is to divide out that 1256. So what that does is essentially reduce this out. Divide this through, and we'd get our final answer. So there's a lot of steps, a lot of figuring. However, once you get down to this point here, you're just simply doing a two-step equation. That's it for this one. I'll see you next time.